The Maker's Garage has gone in-house. We give you another offering from Carbide 3D, the industry leader in benchtop CNC. The Shapeoko 4 CNC router is here. This is a new machine. Carbide 3D constantly strives to improve everything about their machines, all to offer you the top desktop CNC router experience possible. Best in class performance at the best value. Redesigned and refined from its predecessor, the Shapeoko 4 can be pushed harder and work faster. Work holding has been streamlined and simplified. Increased options and strength are present in the new hybrid bed. Years of use, customer feedback, product development, Brought together in a complete package, Shapeoko 4 steps up the standard. Welcome into the Maker's Garage, everybody. Kevin Barnett joined by Winston Moy as usual. And Winston, we're looking at the Shapeoko 4 here. This is a brand new machine, not a redo of an older model. Correct. Um, we took what we liked about the Shapeoko 3, uh, the basics, the V-wheels, the belt architecture, and we added all the improvements that we could from the Shapeoko Pro that we've learned, like the hybrid table, the stronger 15 millimeter belts, and we've upgraded a couple other things like the V-wheels. This is an industrial experience when you get this machine in terms of its capability, but let's start with the hybrid bed. This to me is the biggest improvement in desktop CNC right now, the way that this is constructed, the opportunity that it offers you in different styles for holding different materials. It's, it's a really great step up from just the blank MDF canvas, which was great. You could do whatever you wanted to it, but out of the box, you were stuck with maybe double-sided tape or screwing directly into the MDF. Here, you've got T-slots right off the bat, which is compatible with all of our clamps. You've got MDF, which you could put threaded inserts into or screw into, but overall, you have a lot of options out of the gate without having to modify your wasteboard or anything. This is ready to go as soon as you put it together. And you're gonna get work holding right away. You're gonna start with T-nuts and then you have the glass reinforced uh, clamp system. Yeah, so we start everyone off with half a dozen clamps and these are injection molded um, glass fiber uh, reinforced, as you mentioned, and they're strong, but if you run into them with an end mill, the end mill is pretty safe. Yeah, not only your end mill, but maybe the, the head of your router, your, your router cowlet. Yeah. Um, the only thing that's not safe is probably your pride. <laughs> the start of your work holding experience are the T-nuts and the glass fiber reinforced clamps, but that is only the beginning. You have a lot of places to go for a lot of different materials. And one of the best things is the gator teeth and the tiger claw clamps, you don't have to hold the top of the work surface. You can utilize the entirety of the top of some work pieces. Right, our clamping options provide a lot of flexibility. Um, the gator tooth clamps might be the closest to the uh, basic clamps that come with the machine. You can clamp from the top of a part, but there's also a feature where you can turn them around and use an angled set screw to apply lateral pressure to a part to hold it from the edge. Um, we also have the tiger claws, which are pure side clamping. They apply a lot of crushing force from the side uh, to keep a part from moving and preserve full access to the top of your part. Um, all of these are really great and they give you a lot of flexibility, especially in the T-slots because you can place them anywhere. Yeah, variation, but also I think you can't underplay the strength coming out of these T-slots, the amount of hold down force that you can put on what you're working with. The rigidity of attaching your clamps directly into the aluminum T-slots right. gives you a lot of holding force. It's really rigid. Once you tighten down that um, M6 screw, those clamps aren't going anywhere. We've talked about rigidity in terms of the bed, but let's move to the rest of the structure here. Rigidity has been improved with the brand new V-wheel design. The new V-wheels, they are sturdier than the previous generation ones, and they reduce deflection by about 50%. A lot of what went into the machine before as add-ins or upgrades over time have been put in as standard equipment. What stands out to me is the Z-axis. So that is an evolution of our Z+, Plus, which used to be an upgrade from the old belt drive, but after seeing it in action, it became clear that we need to raise the bar. The Z plus, the lead screw driven Z axis is the way to go. And the router, you can use the carbide compact router or the Makita router. Correct, that is a new, really rigid 65 millimeter mount. It's compatible with both routers and uh, it's very easy to attach and trim because it bolts in through the front uh, while securing your router with two M6 screws. Certainly a stronger part of this entire machine are the belts. They've gotten bigger, stronger, and therefore more accurate. Right. These are 15 millimeter GT2 belts. It's 
The old belts were 9 millimeters, so this is a 60% improvement in stiffness, which means belt stretch is basically a thing of the past. And again, back to evolution, the homing switches, now inductive switches, are also standard equipment. That's an improvement that we've seen from the previous machines. They work really well. They're much more durable and resilient because there's no contact when you home it, so they don't get crushed. Um, so these have just been a lot more problem-free for us, and I think they provide a superior user experience. Okay, so the body is stronger, the body is ready to go. What about the mind here? If you're improving something, you want the mind to go along with it. You can't just have some meathead machine. Right, so this machine has our new 3.0 controller, uh, which has been improved in a number of little subtle ways, but uh, the biggest one is that you don't need any more dongles. Every accessory, every connector has a home on the controller board, so everything's all cleaned up and ready to go as soon as you plug it in. So when this machine arrives in a couple of boxes, it's gonna weigh in this particular one, the XXL at 165 pounds. That's 11 and three quarters stone if you're living in England and living in, I don't know, the eighth century sometime. But this will provide you an opportunity to put it together quickly and be up and running right away. We learned a lot of lessons from the pro um, in terms of how to assemble a machine. So the whole gantry comes together in one assembly so once you build the frame, you roll the gantry on, you clean up some wiring, it's basically ready to cut. The experience of putting this thing together has been improved tremendously. Now we want you to use this machine. We don't want you to work on the machine. You bought it to actually make things. You didn't buy it so you could then spend hours and hours putting other parts on it or making something else for it. It is ready to go out of the box. There are three sizes of this machine available. So folks might encounter that when it comes to their space. This might sort of be your first CNC, potentially. And for a first CNC, you might not want the biggest machine out there. Uh, that might be a little too intimidating, or you might have smaller ambitions. So the standard size shape Boko is a great point of entry at a very reasonable price point. I mean, for a lot of people, it comes down to how much space do you have in the garage? Yeah, that's the biggest decision, garage or an extra room. You started in your extra room. If you're in a small shop, something sticking out 30, 40 inches is a significant chunk of your, your workspace, especially in a one-car garage. Uh, so a narrower or a, a shorter machine from a depth perspective, like the standard or the XL, might be a better form factor if you want to push this up against a wall. But if you have the room to spare, you can get the most done on a double XL. We've covered some of the differences, some of the evolution of this machine, but a lot of the great stuff that Carbide 3D has always provided remains. Right, we still have the software for controlling the machine, Carbide Motion, for free. The 2D design and cam software, Carbide Create, also for free. So that part of the experience hasn't changed, and we still have our fantastic US-based support team. Yeah, the support team is right here in this building. You talk to an actual person, they will try and help you with your machine. And these are manufactured in the United States, which is huge when it comes to parts. A lot of these parts and components are manufactured right here in the US, or even right in Illinois. And so if you need something, it'll ship from our US warehouses. In addition to that part support and the telephone support, you also get the one-year warranty, the 30-day mistakes are on us policy. Both of those are really great features. Um, the standout one is the 30-day mistakes are on us policy because that policy basically covers all your oopsies moments. If you crash something, if you damage something, we want you to be able to approach learning to use this machine without fear. So if you break something and it's on this machine, uh, we will fix it. If you break a part, if you break a V-wheel, if you snap a belt, we will send you a replacement. If you break one of our cutters doing something, we will send you a replacement for that too. So at the end of the day, at the end of the 30 days, you should be able to come out of it with a fully operational machine with the education and learning experiences needed to run one of these machines confidently. Now, Winston has a variety of content up. I'm building a, another library of content on top of that. We're offering a whole bunch of support here at Carbide 3D, but the community at large is another huge benefit to these machines, whether you're talking about on our forums or on other places on the web. There are lots of ideas, lots of support to have. The people who use our machines have been a huge asset. Uh, as you said, there's a huge community on the forum that we have, on Instagram, on various social media, other YouTube content creators. They're all teaching people, showing people what they're doing, inspiring. They're a great resource if you're just starting out, if you don't know what to make, if you don't know how to do something. They're awesome and we're really lucky to have them. The bottom line is this, if you have a curiosity or you have a problem, someone is there to help either from Carbide 3D Direct or someone associated with our company who's passionate about these machines and about CNC and, and hopefully builds your passion at home too to continue to have success with the machine.
yeah, every day I see something new that someone makes and I'm like, why didn't I do that? It's a great feeling to have seeing what everyone else is doing. For me, it was a feeling of power where if I had a part or an idea, be it simple or a little bit complex, I could throw it on the machine in just a couple of hours and I have my idea right in front of me. It's a great way to fix a problem. Um, but again, like you mentioned, the community also gives me ideas. So yeah. if I don't know what to make, there's always something cool right around the corner. Yeah, you're joining a powerful group of people when you purchase a machine from Carbine 3D. This Shape Oko 4 uh, is beyond. I started with a Shape Oko 3. You started even before I did in terms of how it was as a kit. And now look at this industrial experience. The, the experience is great. It's what I wished I had five years ago. It's just so much easier, but we have it now. I've watched this grow up. A lot of my feedback has gone into the machine. It's it's cool to see it grow up and I'm, I'm really liking where we are now. With the Shape Oko 4, you also have the option of adding on the bit setter. Right, the bit setter is a great time saving uh, accessory. If you do tool changes, if you change the tool, it can measure the length and compensate for your new zero coordinate. So that is available for the Shape Oko 4 and it mounts right here in the front, just like the Pro. Um, except the Pro has its standards since it comes with all the bells and whistles. Yeah, I love the bit setter. I would highly recommend it working with it all the time. It was one of the greatest additions. Again, stuff that went into the Shape Oko 3 that now has joined this as a continuation. Right. Winston, it's also good to see a little guy come up from nothing and get to the top. Sweepy made standard equipment. Sweepy has been a surprisingly great addition to the uh, Shape Oko family. Uh, we include it for free with all our machines and it it really does a good job keeping your workspace clean. Started from the bottom, now the whole team's here. Sweepy, 2.0. As always here on Maker's Garage, we like to actually show you the machine working. Winston, let's, uh, let's fire this thing up and cut some stuff. Let's make some chips. All right, as always here, we've made a mess of the machine. We never leave with a clean machine. A dirty machine is a well-used and loved machine, so this is a good sign. All right, Winston's worked here for a while. I've joined the Carbide 3D team. We're gonna be here to provide you all kinds of opportunities to learn, to be inspired. We have the Maker's Garage podcast. We're gonna need definitely Team Winston and Team Kevin t-shirts. I think we, we should make that happen. And maybe, uh, Hashtag Team Winston, hashtag Team Kevin. Oh yeah, oh yeah, the hashtags are a thing. So you can vote for your favorite, but more importantly, you can learn CNC along the way. You can enjoy your brand new Shape Oko 4. Go ahead, jump in with Carbide 3D, jump in with us, jump in with a Shape Oko 4, and really start to be a part of the CNC community. You'll be amazed at what you can make and what you can really do. Teach yourself, teach your kids. It's all possible. All right, I, I tell you what, I've already got an office. I'm still working on parking. I'm going back to my crow's nest. I, I'm, you close the show, Winston, I'm out of here.